Hello everyone and welcome back to the Solo Gamers Club. This is episode 4 of our playthrough of A Touch of Evil 10 year anniversary edition versus the Shadow Witch, the ghost of Elaine Bartlett. Well, the heroes definitely have their backs to the wall. The Shadow Track is currently at 9 and the Shadow Witch has a total of 5 evil elders to assist her. We're definitely going to have to try to pull the stops out if we're going to try to win this game. Unfortunately, time is against us, and uh, we're going to need to try to up our pressure on the Shadow Witch. Our first player is Abigail Stern. Abigail is currently at the South Dock, and she has to make her way to the docks in Tidewater for her next clue. All of the heroes have at least one clue, but... That isn't going to be enough uh, against the Shadow Witch. We need to get at least three for each of them to have any chance. So I think Abigail is going to try to make her way to the docks in Tidewater. And we'll begin with a movement roll for Abigail. Her roll is a four, so she's got four movement points. And we'll move her towards the docks. One, two, three, and four, and she arrives at the town square in Tidewater. Before Abigail begins her actions, she's gonna play some event cards that I've been saving, and I think it's time to do it. She's gonna begin with the event card, Gossip and Rumors. Play at any time, except during a fight, to peek at the secrets of one town elder without revealing them. You may choose one of those secrets to discard and draw a new one without looking to replace it. Well, we only have two viable um, elders remaining. That would be Lord Hanbrook and Mayor Carver. Magistrate Croft is already has a secret madness to him, so he's probably going to be killed at some point whenever he would arrive at a location where there is a minion that's going to automatically kill him, that's going to move the shadow track down too. So I think we are going to use that card to investigate the secrets of Lord Hanbrook and maybe replace any bad secrets that are there. Well, unfortunately, the secrets for Lord Hanbrook aren't good ones. A darkest secret would be turning him into another evil elder. The other one is almost as bad, and that's Werewolf Scratch. So I think what we'll do is we'll obviously use that ability. We're going to replace the darkest secret and discard that, and we'll give him a fresh secret that we don't know what it is. So odds are he won't be an evil elder, but well, we don't know. All right, the next event she's going to play will be Redemption. Choose an evil elder in play and roll a d6. On a roll of 3+, plus, that evil elder is killed and immediately does 6 fight dice attack against the villain. Well, the attack probably won't matter too much because in a cooperative game, the Shadow Witch will heal every round uh, d6 worth of wounds. But if we can kill the elder, that would be big. So we have to select an elder that we want to try to take out. And I think the best one we can target is the Grand Inquisitor. And the reason being is that he has that special ability where he may not be targeted in a fight. So he would be the last casualty before the Shadow Witch would take her last wound. So if we can take him out, we'd be able to at least target the other ones as normal during a showdown. So we're going to make a roll. And if we can get a three or greater, he'll be killed. Here's the roll. And he rolled a three. That's great. She rolled a three. So we've killed the Grand Inquisitor. It's at least something to help us. That'll put her down now to four evil elders. That's great. And that Grand Inquisitor now is going to do six fight dice damage to the Shadow Witch. So we'll roll six dice. And he did only one hit on her. We'll mark it just for the sake of argument. But that's going to be repaired at the during the mystery phase. All right. Now Abigail is at the town square and she's going to 
encounter the space. As this is part of the Village of Tidewater, we have to draw a Village Encounter card and see what happens to her. And the Village Encounter is Break in the Clouds. Village Encounter Recovery. Beams of sunlight break through the heavy clouds. A good omen to be sure. You may heal one wound and draw an event card. Well, Abigail has no wounds currently, but she certainly can draw the event card. The flavor text reads, it has been long since we have seen any light on the horizon. Okay, she is going to draw an event card. We'll see what she gets. And that card is revealed to be Duck and Roll. Play at any time to prevent up to two wounds to any hero, including yourself, or play to cancel a roll on any chart and reroll. Okay, that's a great event. We'll keep that. And now Abigail can use the store in Tidewater to purchase some town items. And we'll take a look through the deck and see what she can find. She has a total of eight investigation. Abigail is going to purchase the harbor log for four investigation and the old map for two. The harbor log is a book which is going to help her with her student ability. It's going to give her an additional cunning and what I'm trying to do is find her some occult items because that's going to give her extra health boxes. But she's going to purchase both of those for a total of six investigation. And that's going to leave her with two, which she can use at the docks to purchase her clue in the future. And that's going to end Abigail's turn. Now we'll move on to Isabella Von Tuch. She is currently at the Icy Waters and she's trying to get to the town square. And here's her roll for move. And she rolls a six, so she has plenty of movement points. So we'll move her to the town square. And she can accomplish that by moving uh, two and three into the town square. That is great. And she'll go right to her actions phase, and she's going to encounter the space. And we start by drawing a Tidewater Village encounter. And she draws another break in the clouds once again. It's going to allow her to heal a wound and draw an event. She's currently unwounded, so we'll have her draw the event card. And that event is revealed to be a skilled hand. Place on any hero, including yourself, once per game round or once per showdown fight round, that hero may re-roll any one die they have just rolled remains in play. Well, that's a good card. All right, we'll play that on one of our investigators. And I think I'm going to play that on Isabella herself. So that'll allow her to reroll one die per game round. All right. Isabella has a total of nine investigation, and she's going to try to spend some of that at the village coastal town item shopping area. And I think Isabella is going to purchase a cutlass. It's going to cost her a total of seven investigation. It's going to give her a plus one to combat. It says when making a spirit, cunning, or honor test, you may re-roll one of the dice. If the re-roll is a one, you must discard the cutlass. All right, we'll give that to Isabella, and that's going to end her turn. All right, next up is Frederick Leone. He is attempting to get to the fields, and that's way on the Shadowbrook board, so we'll have a roll for movement for him. And he rolls a four. He's got four movement points. All right, let's see where he's going to move to. So Frederick and his escort are going to move four movement points, points towards Shadowbrook. One, two, three, and four. And that's going to end Frederick's turn. We would normally be moving on to Heinrich Cartwright, but Heinrich is KO'd at the town hall. That is going to complete the hero's turn. We're going to move on to the mystery phase. We begin the mystery phase by finding out where Solomon is going, and he's at the Forgotten Island. He's headed towards Smuggler's Cove. All right. And he arrives at Smuggler's Cove without encountering any of our investigators, which is a good thing. All right. Oh, incidentally, I did forget um, uh, Isabella Von Tuch would have used her clue card. She'll pay two investigation while she was at the town hall, and that's going to gain her her second 
clue token. I almost forgot. All right. We'll figure out where her next layer is going to be. Next layer card is the shipwreck that's close by. Very good. Our next actionable step on the mystery phase would be for the villain to heal. Now the villain technically has a wound on it, so we're going to heal that wound. Uh, they're for sure going to roll at least a one. It had one wound on it, so that's healed. Now we're going to move to the cooperative mystery phase chart roll, and that is going to be resolved by Abigail. And here's the roll. Rolls a seven, and once again, that's Surge of Evil. So we're going to be making a roll on the minion chart. All right, it's a D6 roll. Result is a five, and that's a Shadow Witch attack. The villain attacks. The hero must immediately resolve a single fight round with the villain. Instead of causing wounds, each hit done to the villain gains one investigation. This is not counted as a showdown. If there are no heroes in the space, place two investigation there and move the shadow track one step closer to darkness. All right, so we're going to have to draw a layer card and see where the shadow witch attack occurs. And that's going to happen at the church. Well, there's nobody there, so we're going to place two investigation at the church. And the shadow track is going to move and that's going to place us into a new stage. Shadow Track is going to move from 9 down to 8. That's going to award the Shadow Witch a plus 1 combat marker. And now, since we've moved into a new stage, Magistrate Croft and Mayor Carver are going to move. We'll begin with Magistrate Croft. And he is currently under a secret madness. So wherever he moves to, if there's a minion there, he'll be killed. If there's a hero there, I believe we have to resolve a mystery card. Okay. So we'll draw a layer card and see where Magistrate Croft is going to move to. And he's going to the blacksmith. There's no one there. All right. So we're going to move him to the blacksmith and place two investigation in that space. And now Mayor Carver, he's currently at the manor and he's on the hunt. We'll see where he's going to move to. And he's going to the marsh. Okay, we'll place him in the marsh. All right. Incidentally, at the start of the mystery phase, I should have placed another token on this Remains in Play card, Something Wicked. So that's the second token on that card. When three are placed on the card, we remove them and add a plus one wound marker to the villain and move the shadow track two steps closer to darkness. We have to try to get rid of that card somehow. All right, now Abigail has to resolve a mystery card. And the mystery card is revealed to be Guarded Secrets. Mystery, roll a d6 and place this card on the town elder with honor equal to the roll. If more than one, choose. If none, move the shadow track d3 spaces forward instead. This town elder's secrets may not be discarded or looked at except when taken as part of a hunting party or if killed in a cooperative game. Remains in play. All right, we'll make the roll and see what happens. We're checking the honor value of the elders. Roll is a five. Well, the only elder with a honor of five was Sophie the midwife and she's been killed. So, um, I guess we would place that card on her even though she's killed. Her cards are still out there. So we'll do that. And that's going to end the round. And we're going to move our first player marker from Abigail to Isabella. All right, Isabella is up next. She's trying to get to the shipwreck, but she does not have any investigation. Now, I think she can get some by going to the stone bridge, though. Isabella's going to roll for move. And she rolls a five. She's got five movement points. I think that's what we'll do is we'll move her to the stone bridge. We have a chance of picking up an event card there as well. So she's going to move one and two. She grabs the investigation that is at the stone bridge. And now she's going to encounter the space. And we have to hope we roll higher than a one or two. Otherwise, we've got another mystery card to deal with. Here is the roll. 
Yeah, she rolls a one. Oh boy, oh boy. All right, well, we have to resolve another mystery card, and that card is revealed to be the Order's Influence, Mystery Conspiracy. Play this card on Magistrate Croft. While he is alive, the heroes may not use militia, and any hero starting in or moving into a space with militia immediately takes D6 plus 3, D6 minus 3 hits. Heroes with the Magistrate's Mandate are unaffected. Place a Militia at two random locations. If he is dead or join the villain, discard and move the Shadow Track one step closer to darkness remains in play. Well, Magistrate Croft is technically still alive. He is under that secret madness right now, but he is alive. So, now how this is, in, this is interesting because Frederick Leone has that escort ability where he has a private militia. So I don't think that this card can overwrite that. That's a part of his abilities. So uh, we do have to place two militia in random locations, however. And we'll do that. So we'll draw two cards and we're going to be placing militia at the bog and the monastery. All right. So now we are going to have to be weary of militia units. If we move into a space, we're going to take D6 minus 3 wounds. All right. And that's going to end Isabella's turn, and we'll move on now to Frederick Leone. He is on the road space just east of the crossroads. He's attempting to get to the fields. And here's his roll for move. He rolls a 4. So he's got four movement points. Now, unfortunately, there is a living tree that is at the crossroads. So I think what he's going to do, him and his militia are going to move into the crossroads and we're going to battle those living trees. Living trees have three fight dice and they're going to hit only on sixes. However, their sixes will count as two wounds. Frederick has a combat value of 2, and he's going to gain plus 1 for the escort that he has with him. So he'll be rolling 3 dice as well. Now he has a Smuggler's Blade, which will allow him to re-roll one of his fight dice, or he can re-roll any uh, We can force the opponent to re-roll one of their fight dice, or he can re-roll all of his. So that's a very valuable item, and we'll make the roll now. All right, well, as it stands now, Frederick has done one hit and the living trees have done one smash hit. So I'm gonna have, he's gonna use his smuggler's blade and he's gonna force them to re-roll one of their dice. And he'll keep his as a hit and we'll re-roll that black one and hopefully we can have that come out as not a six. Okay, here's the reroll. And they rolled a one, so they have no hits. He has done one wound to the living trees. And we'll mark that accordingly. The living trees have a health of four. So we're going to move into round two now. And um, that smuggler's blade can be used once per fight round. So that's pretty good. We'll go to round two now. Okay, here's round two. And that time, he scored two hits, and the tree has none. It has to have sixes. So he scored another two wounds on the tree, which is great. That moves that up to three wounds. He needs one more to take him out. All right, so we're going to move on now to round three and see what happens. Okay, here is the roll for round three. And that time he has no hits and the creature did a smash attack against him. So I think what he'll do is he's going to use his smuggler's blade and have them re-roll that success. All right, and here is the living tree's re-roll. They rolled a three, so there's no hits. We'll move on now to the fourth round of combat. And the, we need to get one more hit on that living tree. 
and we've done it. Living Trees have done no hits. We've done one more. And Frederick Leone has killed the Living Trees. That's going to earn him five investigation. So we'll remove the token and the wounds. And his Smuggler's Blade has come in very handy indeed. All right. And now he is going to encounter the space. He has a total of 11 investigation and one clue. Okay, here is the roll. I hope we can roll higher than a two. And we rolled a four, and that's great. That's going to entitle him to an event card. And he's going to draw Autopsy. Play as an action while at the doctor's office, and only if there is at least one town elder dead gain D6 investigation. That's a good card. All right, we'll add that to our tableau. Next up is Heinrich Cartwright, and I failed to mention last turn that he uh, revived during the mystery phase. So his turn is active again. He has a total of three investigation. He's trying to get to the abandoned keep. He's at the town hall. Now the problem is, is he has a living trees here at the doctor's office, so he would have to take the long way around to get to the abandoned keep. There are some investigation tokens that are available for him nearby, so he might be able to move through those locations. We'll have him roll for movement. And he rolls a four, so he's got four movement points. And I think what we'll do is we'll have him move one into the church, gaining an investigation, two into the blacksmith, gaining an investigation, three into the magistrate's office, and I think we'll leave him there. And he's going to encounter the space at the magistrate's office, and that allows him to draw an event card. And he draws Strength of Courage. Play immediately. Play this card on any hero, plus one to honor, and it remains in play. Well, our lowest honor characters are Isabella, Abigail, and um, I think we'll give that to Isabella. Ab Abigail currently has an honor value of three with that old map. And Isabella only has two. So we'll play that on her. All right. And I'm not going to do any training of cunning at this point. And that's going to end Heinrich's turn. We'll move on to Abigail's turn. Abigail is currently at the town square. She has to just move one space to the docks and she'll be able to pick up potentially her next clue. She'll make her roll for move. And she rolls a two. We'll have her move one movement point to the docks. And uh, she's going to encounter the space and we have to draw a village encounter. And the village encounter reads, two if by sea. Village encounter. Roll once on the villain's minion chart, re-rolling event results, and place the minion at the icy waters. That minion then moves ashore. Roll random to determine which space it moves to. All right. So we're going to make a roll on the minion chart, and we're going to re-roll any of the events results and be placing a minion in the icy waters. And then it's going to roll using these dice combinations, one, two, three, four, and five, six, and that'll tell you where it comes to shore. If it you roll a one or two, it's going to come into the docks where Abigail is. First, we'll make our roll in the minion chart, and we need to get a result of three or four. Okay, a two would be a Wrath of the Shadow Witch. It's an event. Five is the Shadow Witch attack event. A four. That's going to be a Living Trees. We'll place a living trees in the icy waters, and it has a special ability called Pack, and it says when a living trees is rolled, place a living trees minion in an additional random location. So we'll place another living trees at the Forgotten Island. And now the living trees is going to move according to that movement schedule, and I hope we don't roll a one or two. And of course we rolled a two, so the living trees moves ashore into the docks, and we're going to have to fight that out of turn. Oh, boy. And so the Living Trees will be rolling three dice. Abigail has a 
combat value of two. Now, in order for her to do that clue token, she needs to remain in that space. So we'll just have to see what happens in the combat. Living trees will only hit on a six. Here's the first round. And Abigail has done one hit, which is great. We'll mark the tree accordingly, and then we can decide if we want to stick it out or or not. And I think we'll play at least another round. She currently has a health of three, so she would be able to sustain one attack. All right, here's round two combat. Oh, oh boy, not good. Creature's done two hits. That's going to be f uh, four wounds to Abigail. She's only done one. Mm. I'll see if I have any cards I can use to stop it. And I do have one. I have duck and roll. Play at any time to prevent up to two wounds to any hero. So, or play a play to cancel a roll on any chart and reroll. That won't work. So we all we can do is cancel one of those. So she's going to take two wounds. She'll inflict another wound on the creature. So that's what's going to happen. So we'll give two wounds to Abigail for a smash attack and another wound on the creature. Now we have to decide if um, she only has one health remaining. So she would only be able to survive one more smash attack. Uh, I think we have to retreat. She has too much, too many items that she can lose, and I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to have her escape to the town square. I can maybe move her to the beach where she can get some healing, possibly. But unfortunately, the living trees will remain there, and it's going to recover its health. It doesn't keep the uh, hits that you've got on it from previous attacks. So that's what will happen. And that's unfortunate. That escape is going to end Abigail's turn, and we'll move on now to mystery phase and we'll begin the mystery phase by placing a third token on the something wicked card and that is going to when there's three markers on there it says that the immediately remove them and add a plus one wound marker to the villain and move the shadow track two steps closer to darkness oh boy that is not good so the Shadow Witch will gain a plus one wound marker. And the Shadow Track is going to move two steps where it's six right now. Mm. I really am very skeptical as to whether we're going to have any chance at all um, on defeating the Shadow Witch. This is getting bad. And now Solomon will move and we'll find out where he's going. Solomon is going to move to the barracks. All right, well, let's calculate where the nearest to the barracks will be. That would be one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, four. So we can go either way. Um, obviously, I would take the way that doesn't go through the stone bridge. I believe it's our option if there's multiple paths. So that's what I'm going to do. One, two, three, four. It moves to the barracks without impacting any of our heroes. That's a good thing. All right, now our first player is Isabella. She's going to make the roll on the mystery phase chart. Okay, here is the roll. Rolls a seven again, and that's that surge of evil. We're going to make a roll on the minion chart. Minion chart roll is a six, and that's a shadow witch attack. We'll be drawing a layer card to see where the shadow witch attacks. And that is going to attack at the Magistrate's office. And unfortunately, that is where Heinrich Cartwright is. All right. Well, Heinrich has a combat value of only two. So he'll get two dice. The Shadow Witch has a combat value of four. That'll get four dice. We have no mystery cards in play that are remains in play right now. So we, she won't get a benefit for that, but she will get, and she won't get, the Spectre ability because he has a Spirit of Four. So it's going to get a plus one combat for its plus one combat marker. That'll be five dice. 
I believe that that's all. So we have to go undergo one round of combat. And we're going to earn one investigation for each hit on the Shadow Witch. Oh boy. Well, we've done one hit. That's going to earn Heinrich one investigation. But unfortunately, the Shadow Witch has done three hits on Heinrich Cartwright. So that'll use up three of his, excuse me, four wound boxes. And that will end the encounter. We only do one combat round. So I've marked Heinrich with three wounds. All right. And now Isabella has to resolve a mystery card. And the card's revealed to be Traitor's Blood, Mystery Death. Every hero must roll a d6 and add their honor. The hero with the lowest result, roll off if tied, must choose one of the town elders to be killed by the villain. The hero also loses investigation equal to the chosen elder's honor. Oh, that's really going to put a nail in our coffin. Mm. All right, we'll make the roll and uh, we'll see what happens here. I'll make those off camera and find out which investigator that is going to apply to. And I've determined that that's going to be Frederick Leon. Now he has to kill one of the town elders. And I think who he's going to kill is Magistrate Croft. That's going to get rid of that Order's Influence card. And uh, he's going to have his honor is a four. So that means Frederick will lose four investigation. And I'll move him down to seven. And that frees us from that problem with the militia, at least. But unfortunately, the death of the town elder is going to move the shadow track two steps. Shadow track will move two steps. It's at four. She's going to earn another plus one combat marker. And now um, we moved into a new stage, so that is going to move Mayor Carver. Mayor Carver is on the hunt, and he's moving to the crossroads. So we'll move him to the crossroads and that's going to complete the round and we'll move the first player marker from Isabella Von Tuch to Frederick Leon. Oh, well, I'm not sure what we can do. We have four points on the shadow track remaining. If that gets to zero, we're going to lose automatically. If we go to a showdown with the creature, uh, in most cases, that creature will be rolling nearly 10 dice against each of the heroes, except for Isabella. She has two clues, and that's going to reduce their combat advantage by three. Uh, but I don't know what to do. I think mm, this is a tough one. Well, Frederick Leone is up next, and he's attempting to make his way to the fields. Now, we can use those layer cards that we're using for clues those can also be used in the standard fashion to start a showdown um, so frederick would have to travel to the fields and instead of attempting to get the clue he could start the showdown there but i don't like the prospects of that i've got heinrich cartwright wounded hmm. i think we'll have to delay it a little bit i think what we'll do is have frederick move and try to get to the fields all right, here's Frederick's roll for movement. And he rolls a five. We've been getting pretty good movement rolls, I have to say. And he'll move five movement points. So I think he'll travel one, two, three, four, five to the blacksmith's office. That'll earn him the investigation token. And, um, oh, his militia will also move with him. And then he is going to draw an event card. Well, Encounter the space. He draws. Whoops. Honorable gesture. Event honor. Give any hero or town elder plus two honor for the rest of the turn or showdown fight round. Or prevent any number of wounds to another hero that is about to take any. Gain two. Wait, I'm sorry. Prevent any number of wounds to another hero is about to take. Gain two investigation for each wound prevented this way. Okay, well, that's a pretty good card. We'll keep that. And now, Frederick could purchase some items. 
right now he has a total of one town item or village item in this case it's a village encounter card so he could purchase up to two more items we'll take a look in the town deck and see what's there and i think he's going to purchase a pistol that'll give him a plus one to combat for a cost of five and i think that's going to end his turn next up is heinrich cartwright he's at the magistrate's office and he's badly wounded doctor's office would be the place to go but there's living trees there so we'll have him roll for move he rolls a one that's going to entitle him to a event card now he's resourceful he'll be able to draw two events and keep one of them and he finds shocking discovery and entourage Choose a town elder with one or more unrevealed secrets. Reveal one of those secrets. Gain two investigation if it is a little secret or four investigation if it's anything else. Or play as an action to automatically collect investigation in your space without having to make a test. All right, the other one is Entourage. Play immediately. This, play this card on a hero. That hero may now carry up to two additional ally cards. Hmm. Well, I would think that would be probably best played for Isabella on Isabella the shocking discovery card um, we could we could do that one and we would earn it's gonna make um, if I choose uh, Lord Hanbrook we know he has that werewolf card so that would earn us a total of four investigation for that I guess we'll do that I'll discard the entourage card and we'll end up playing the shocking or i'll take the shocking discovery card we don't have to play that right now he has one movement point available to him and uh oh boy he's trying to get to the abandoned keep i guess we'll move him one space towards the covered bridge and maybe he can get there from that location now he has lots of wounds here i think what i'll do is i'll spend three investigation and heal one of his wounds that'll give him two health boxes available at least we'll do what we can and that's going to end his turn we'll move on to abigail stern and she is at the town square i forgot to mark abigail she actually has two wounds out of her three health boxes so i think what we'll do is we're going to try to get her to the beach and she'll be able to heal a wound there we'll have her roll for movement Oops. All right. Here's her roll. And she rolls a three. So we'll have her move to the beach and she'll encounter the space. And we're going to have to draw a Tidewater encounter card. We'll give that a shuffle up and see what we get. Okay, and her card is a troubled past. Village encounter. The secrets of Tidewater's past are kept close by the people of the village, for none can escape the burden of their deeds. Make an honor six plus test and gain two investigation for every six plus rolled. For every one rolled, draw a mystery card. Hmm. All right. Well, Abigail's honor level is a total of three, so she can roll three dice. And we'll see what happens. Here is the roll. And she didn't get any sixes, but she did get a one. So we're going to have to resolve a mystery card. Hmm. And the cards revealed to be the Order's Influence. Mystery Conspiracy. Play this card on the Harbor Master. While he is alive, any hero wanting to move across a water path must pay to investigation. If he is dead or joined the villain, discard and move the shadow track one step closer to darkness. Well, that is what's going to happen. The flavor text reads, These are my waters. You pay my fees. All right. Well, the shadow track, he is a, an evil elder. So he is the master of death right now. He is going to move the shadow track one step. That's down to three now. 
And then uh, she is going to use the Widow's Cottage. That'll allow her to heal a wound. That'll take one of the wounds off. That'll move her down to one of her three health boxes. It's going to end her turn. And uh, now we'll move on to Isabella Von Tuk. Isabella is trying to get to the shipwreck where she can use her clue card. We'll have her roll for move. She rolls a four. And I think that might be enough to do it. One, two, and three, four gets her to the shipwreck. That's great. I apologize for that. It was out of frame. She would have moved from the stone bridge. One, two, and then three, four for the water path. That gets her to the shipwreck, and she will encounter the space. And we'll draw a shipwreck card. And that one is revealed to be Splintered Collapse. Danger. The rotten boards splinter beneath your feet and you plummet to the deck below. Roll four dice. For every roll of a one or two, take a wound and lose an item, ally, or investigation. Then encounter the shipwreck again. Oh, all right, we got to roll four dice. So we'll see what happens here. Okay, here's the roll. And amazingly, she didn't roll any ones or twos. So we've completed our encounter at the shipwreck that will allow her to use her clue card. She'll pay one investigation and she's gonna gain her third clue. And that's one of the only good pieces of news that we've had in a while. That's great. And that's gonna end the player's round and we'll move on to the mystery phase. That's going to be resolved by Frederick Leon. We'll start the phase by placing a token on the Something Wicked card. If we get two more on that, that's going to move the Shadow Track two steps. Next up is Solomon, and he's going to move to the Covered Bridge. So he has to take the path closest to the Covered Bridge, and he's going to move through the space with Abigail at the beach. So that means that Abigail has to roll on Solomon's chart. So we'll make the roll. Now Abigail has the keyword strange and it says on the table if the key if the heroes has keyword strange add plus one to the roll. So we'll be rolling plus one. Her roll is a five that's modified to a six and that is going to produce uh, discard your layer card and draw a new one. Okay. Well, Abigail's um, layer card was a dox card, so we will have to draw a new one for her. And that one becomes the marsh. So that's her new target. We'll give her the marsh card. Dox are discarded. All right. And then uh, Solomon will continue on to the crossroads and he won't impact anyone else. All right. And now our first player will resolve the cooperative mystery phase roll, and that's going to be Frederick. And he's going to make a 2d6 roll. He rolls a 6, and that is called March of Darkness. Every minion on the board immediately moves two spaces along the shortest path to the town hall. If there are no minions on the board, instead roll once on the minion chart, re-rolling event results, and place the minion at two locations. Well, we have minions on the board. I will move those. I'm not going to show those. I'll describe what's happening. The living trees will move to the town hall. We have two living trees on the Echo Lake board. Those will also move towards the town hall, one moving into the bog and another moving into the south dock. And finally, we have one on the coast board, another living trees. And that moves, when you're on the coast board, those move to the town square, and that's where it's going to move, from the docks to the town square. All right. And now he's going to resolve a mystery card, and we've got the card laying in wait. Mystery. During the next fight round with the villain, it adds plus one to all of its fight dice rolls to hit, hitting on a four, five, or six instead of the normal five or six. Discard after one fight round, or at the end of the first complete round of a cooperative showdown remains in play. So that is going to apply to every attack during the showdown against each hero. Oh, this can't get much worse. 
So all that remains is we'll move our first player marker from Le Frederick Leone to Heinrich Cartwright. And um, I'm not quite sure even what to do. Well, I'm going to begin with a move roll for Heinrich Cartwright. He rolls a one. And uh, that's going to allow him to draw two event cards because of his resourceful ability. And we can keep one of those. And he draws Reassuring Speech and Duel of Honor. Reassur reassuring Speech. Play as an action while in a town space to move the shadow track D3 steps away from darkness. Gain two investigation for each step moved on the shadow track. Then remove this card from the game. Or cancel any mystery card that is keyword Hysteria. Well, I think we're definitely going to be keeping that reassuring speech. We'll keep that card. That's going to allow now Heinrich to move a space. We'll have him move to the magistrate's office. And before he encounters the space, let's see if we can get some cards here that he might be able to use. Well, we can use that reassuring speech as an action Play while in a town space to move the shadow track D3 steps away from darkness. We'll roll a D3 and see what happens. Let's hope we can get a 3 here. And we rolled a 1, so it's going to move one space away. That'll move it to 4, and that's going to earn him 2 investigation. So we'll give him 2 investigation points. That's going to move him up to 5. And uh, we'll see if there's any other event cards that can be played. And, uh, hmm. well, we do have this card called If I Could Just Reach, and that's not going to allow us to draw an item out of any of the discard piles. And I think we're going to do that. So I'll go through the discard piles and see what the best item is for Heinrich. And from the in deck, we have the Cutlass. And that's going to allow him a plus one combat. And then when making Spirit, Cunning, or Honor test, you may re-roll one of your dice. If the roll is a one, you have to discard the Cutlass. So we'll take that card. I realize I'm fighting a losing battle here, but I'm trying whatever we can do to, uh, to try to uh, improve our position. We're more than likely going to uh, lose before we can even bring this game to a showdown. We're at four right now on the shadow track. We'll continue on. Our next player is going to be Abigail Stern. All right, Abigail is at the beach. She's attempting to get to the marsh, and uh, she has one wound. We'll make a roll for movement for her. And one thing we do have is this old map. Instead of moving normally, discard the old map to move to any space on the board. We might end up doing that. And here's her movement roll. She rolls a five. That would allow her to go two, three, four, five. She would be able to reach the crossroads from there. But I think since time is of the essence, we're going to use the old map. And we'll have her move directly to the marsh. And she reaches the marsh in tidewater, and she's going to encounter the space. We're going to roll a d6, and on a one or two, we'll draw a mystery card. She rolls a five. That's great. That will entitle us to an event card draw. And she gets the card, Leading Questions. Play as an action to gain D3 Investigation. Well, uh, I think what we'll do is we'll have her do that. She's going to play that card immediately. We'll roll a D3 and pick up that much Investigation. And she rolls a three. So we've earned three Investigation. That's great. I think what we're going to do is spend that three investigation immediately and she's going to heal the wound that she has. That'll clean up her health to full capacity. And now she's going to use her clue card, spending one investigation to gain her second clue token. So that's pretty good. And her new layer card is going to be at Smuggler's Cove. Okay. And that was a pretty good turn for Abigail, and uh, we'll close her turn out there. And we'll move on now to Isabella Vantuk. She is at the 
shipwreck and I neglected to draw a clue card for her so we'll do that right now and she her clue card will be at the lighthouse okay I'll place that on her card she's currently at the shipwreck all right Isabella is going to roll for movement she's attempting to get to the lighthouse and she rolls a two she has two movement points I guess we'll move her to the icy waters that'll be two movement points on the water path and then she's going to encounter the space and she's going to roll a d6 and hopefully we can roll a three or higher and we did we rolled a four she'll draw an event and she gets i'll handle this event play this card at the start of any fight involving another hero except the showdown remove that hero from the fight and move to their space replacing them in the fight Gain an extra fight dice equal to your honor during this first fight round. At the end of the fight, double any reward earned. That's a good card. All right, that's going to end Isabella's turn. We'll move on to Frederick Leone. All right, Frederick has three investigation and one clue. He's attempting to get to the fields. He's currently at the blacksmith shop. And here's his roll for move. Rolls a five. So it's going to give him enough movement to get there, I believe. He's going to move one, two, three, four, and five to the fields. He'll pick up the two investigation that's there. And now he's going to encounter the dangerous space, which is the fields. We'll have him roll a d6, and a three or greater will gain an event. And he did it. He'll draw an event card. And that card is revealed to be a painful truth. Event discovery. Play on any hero to prevent them from moving this turn. They, might, they must roll for lingering as normal. The hero gains d6 investigation. Well, that's a way to get some investigation for us, but at the cost of endangering one of the heroes. We'll keep that card. And now... Frederick is going to play his clue card and he'll pay the two investigation and that's going to earn him his second clue token. All right. And his next clue is going to be at the, oh, the Forgotten Island. Okay, well, we'll give him that clue. Incidentally, if you do choose to want, you don't like the clue card that you have, you can purchase uh, another layer card at the normal cost. Uh, to replace it so that is an option for us and that's going to bring the heroes portion of the turn to a close and we'll move on to the mystery phase that is going to be resolved by Heinrich Cartwright and we'll begin the phase by placing another token on that something wicked card that's the second and now we're going to move Solomon he is currently at the crossroads and he's going to move to the windmill Okay, so that move is going to have him travel through the magistrate's office, and that means that Heinrich Cartwright will have to roll on Solomon's chart. And uh, he is a strange character as well, so he'll be getting plus one on the roll. A four that's modified to a five, and it says discard one event card of your choice. Um, remain, including remains in play. Discard your layer card and draw a new, I'm sorry, that's number five, I'm not reading that right. It is discard one event card of your choice, including remains in play. All right. So, well, I think this would be a good chance to get rid of that um, painful truth card. So we'll discard that card. We probably wouldn't want to use that anyway. All right, and then Solomon will continue on to the windmill where he won't impact anyone else. Okay, and next up is Heinrich Cartwright will be making the advanced cooperative mystery phase chart roll. Here is the roll. He rolls an eight and that is murder, murder. Draw a random location and place three investigation there. 
move the shadow track one step closer to darkness. This counts as a mystery card murder uh, if it had been played for the villain's abilities. Okay, so we're going to draw a layer card and see where that is going to happen. The murder is going to happen at the Old Woods. So we will place three investigation there. We'll place the three tokens at the Old Woods. And now the murder murder kicks in and that's going to be the guilty shall pay ability of the shadow witch and if you remember earlier in the series we discovered that in the frequently asked questions um, when you're playing cooperatively it says here that we're supposed to roll a die and on a four five or six the guilty shall pay would activate normally otherwise it would be uh, solomon would move the shortest route to the murder location so we'll make the roll Rolls a one, so that's going to be Solomon moving. And he's going to move to the murder site. And the shortest route is going to go through, once again, the magistrate's office. That's going to force another roll by Heinrich. He gets a plus one because he's got the strange keyword. Rolls a three, and that's modified to a four, and that's take a wound. All right, well, that is going to give Heinrich his third wound out of his four health boxes. Solomon will continue on to the old woods. Well, that's better than the guilty shall pay ability, which would have killed uh, an elder, and that would have cost us another two shadow tracks. So the shadow track now is at three right now. It moved down from four to three. All right. And now we have to resolve a mystery card, and we have uh, the Order's Influence, Mystery Conspiracy. Play this card on Lord Hanbrook while he is alive. Roll a d6 at the start of each mystery phase. On the roll of a 4+, plus, draw an additional mystery card this turn. If he is dead or joined the villain, discard and move the shadow track one step closer to darkness. Well, he's still alive. He's one of our only few elders that we do have alive and uh, so that card's going to play on him and the flavor text reads um, you are unwelcome here strangers i think you'd better go all right so during the next mystery phase if this card is still active we're going to be having to resolve two mystery cards so we've placed that on lord handbrook and uh, that's going to complete the round First player marker will move to Abigail Stern. Abigail's going to roll for movement. Now she's attempting to get to Smuggler's Cove. And uh, the problem is, is she doesn't have any investigation points. She only has one. And she would cost her three to try to get the clue at Smuggler's Cove, plus one if she wants to take the secret passage at the abandoned keep. So we'll roll for move. She rolls a five. All right, so she's got five movement points, and I think what we'll do is we'll have her move two points to the old woods. I know Solomon is there, but um, all he's going to do is lower her fight dice total by one. We'll gain the three investigation, and that moves her up to four, and now she is going to encounter the space at the old woods. And the cards reveal to be Creeping Vines, Danger Plant. Pressing deeper into the woods, you are ensnared by a tangle of vines with a will of its own. Make a combat 6 plus test. If passed, gain 3 investigation. If failed, take D3 wounds and make the test again until successful. Oh, well, uh, Abigail has a combat value of 2. So she'll have to make the test with 2 dice and she needs a 6. This is tough. And she failed. So she's going to take D3 wounds, and then we got to take the test again. And of course, she rolled a 3, and that is going to KO her. Mm. All right. So that's going to KO her. She is going to be carried to the town hall. And now we have to roll a d6 to see how much investigation and or items and allies she will lose. She rolled a 6. She's going to lose 4 investigation. 
her explorer's journal and her harbor log. Oh, that totally cleaned her out. Oh. And that's going to end her turn and we'll move on to Isabella. She is at the icy waters and she's attempting to get to the lighthouse. Now, Isabella does not have enough investigation points. So I think what we'll do is try to get her to the lighthouse. And maybe when she encounters the space, we might be able to gain some investigation that way. So here's her move roll. She rolls a six, so she's got plenty of move. We'll have her move into the lighthouse and then she is going to encounter the space and we'll draw a lighthouse card. And the card is Harpoon. Item, hand weapon, plus one to cunning. Discard during a fight to immediately inflict an extra four fight dice attack against your opponent or eight fight dice if you are fighting a beast. Well, that's a pretty good card for her. And unfortunately, um, she would be able to normally be able to purchase that clue, but she doesn't have enough investigation. So I think what we could do is in the future, I could move her to the docks and we're able to discard any corner location item and gain D6 investigation. So we could do that, I suppose. All right, that's going to end her turn and we'll move on to Frederick Leone. He is at the fields. He's trying to get to the Forgotten Island. And Frederick will make his move roll. He rolls a three. All right. Well, I think what we'll do is um, I could stop at the windmill or we could just try to use all of the movement points. Hmm. I think we'll just move all the movement points. One, two, three. That'll move him to the road space. And uh, that's going to end his turn. We'll move on to Heinrich Cartwright. He is currently at the Magistrate's office. He's trying to get to the abandoned keep. We'll have him roll for move. He rolls a four, so he's got enough movement points to get there. That's good. So he'll move one, two, three, four to the abandoned keep, and then he is going to encounter the space. Now, unfortunately, he has three wounds, and it's going to cost us three investigation to buy that clue token so we'll just have to risk it i'm going to draw the abandoned keep card and the card is attacked roll once on the villain's minion chart and work out the result flavor text is did you hear that there's something down here with us all right we'll make the roll on the minion chart now this doesn't mean it's going to be a minion it could be a an event as well because it says work out the result okay here's the roll Roll is a five, and that's a Shadow Witch attack. All right, we're going to draw a layer card and see where the Shadow Witch appears. And that's going to be at Smuggler's Cove, so we're going to be placing two investigation points at Smuggler's Cove. There's no one there. And that is going to bring the that portion of the turn to a close. And Heinrich is going to spend three investigation using his clue card and he'll gain his second clue and that's going to end his turn and that's going to end the round and we'll move on to the mystery phase we're going to begin that by putting another token on the something wicked card that is going to give the shadow witch an extra plus one combat and move the shadow track two steps closer to darkness it's going to move it down to one Abigail is our first player, but she is KO'd, so we have to transfer that first player marker to Isabella Von Took, and she's going to resolve the rest of the mystery cards. Now we have to move Solomon next. Solomon's at the Old Woods, and he's going to move to the Monastery. All right, well, he's not going to impact anyone by that movement, so that's good. We'll move him to the Monastery. And next up, we have to make our roll on the mystery phase chart to see what happens. That'll be resolved by Isabella. And here's the roll. Roll is a three and that's Cursed Village. Immediately draw and resolve one mystery card for each hero, starting with the first player. This replaces the normal mystery card draw for the turn. Oh, I think this is gonna do us in. Okay, here we'll have to start with our first player. That's Isabella and she's gonna resolve a mystery card. 
Evil is on the move. Place one investigation in every unnamed space on the board. While in play, the investigation cost printed on layer cards is doubled. Remains in play. All right. Well, I'll take care of that if we survive this. Now the next mystery card will be performed by Frederick Leone. And that card is the Order's Influence. Play this card on Sophie. Well, Sophie is dead. If she is dead or the villain, or join the villain, discard and move the Shadow Trek one step closer to darkness, and that's going to do us in. We're going to be at zero, and we've lost. And unfortunately, that's going to bring our playthrough to a close. I tried my best, but uh, the Shadow Witch is certainly a very, very difficult villain. It's a fun villain, though. Um, she has so many interactions that uh, she presents to the investigators that it's really like solving a puzzle to try to defeat her. I think where I made my biggest mistakes is early in the game, I attempted to keep trying to use those secret passages to uh, try to get to the locations of my clue cards. And like the abandoned keep was terrible. I had at least two investigators wasting multiple turns trying to get through there. And I should have just used the overland movement and moved that way rather than trying to force that. And I wasted a lot of, a lot of time doing that. Well, thank you so much for joining me at the Solo Gamers Club. I hope you enjoyed this playthrough. Um, look forward to bringing you future content. And I hope you all check in and see what we have for you. Thanks for watching and have a nice evening.